Welcome back to the case podcast, The Way We Start with Lucky. I'm your host, Mr. Lucky. Have you ever heard of the term sudden death? And when I say that, I don't mean football or basketball or the movie. I'm talking about sudden cardiac death, especially among people younger than 35 who should not be having sudden death or facing sudden death. Today, we are joined by Dr. Jose Carlos Moreno. Summers, yeah, Collins, <laughs> consultant intervention on cardiolo cardiologist here at King's. And he'll be taking us on a deep dive into sudden cardiac death, not football, or the movie. Dr. Jose, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. Lovely to be here with you today. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, sudden death. What is it? How how do you explain it? Yeah, usually we define this uh, sudden uh, cardiac death as uh, unexpected death uh, for a cardiac cause uh, in very short time, usually generally less than one hour. Mm -hmm. In people with apparently no prior uh, condition or, or prior disease to have this. And they just, it's like somebody running a marathon and then they just fall down and they're dead. Yeah, it can happen. Um, it depends a lot uh, about age. Mm -hmm. Age is age dependent. So usually in young population, less than 35, uh, is uh, because in a related condition. Uh, first of all, this uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You have all, other time of a cardiomyopathy. Uh, you can have uh, fatal arrhythmias. You can have uh, uh, abnormalities in the coronary arteries, mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that is congenital, and you don't know that is is there. So that's the reason is is you need to to do some checkups because we can detect one of these problems. For example, mm -hmm. just with an ECG, this this basic uh, uh, electrical activity of the heart, it can be detected. We can detect ninety five percent of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or more than eighty five percent of the uh, arrhythmia that can induced problem in the in the heart majority it's, it's very strange that you have the you are the first case in the family so usually it's something running so you have one cousin one uncle uh, your grandparent uh, something uh, somebody somewhere down the line in the family uh, like a hypertrophic hypertrophic cardiomyopathy um depending the the gen disorder you can have these uh, fatal arrhythmia so yeah it's okay so somebody can be um living a whole 30, 35 years and be carrying an underlying condition with him. That's just, you know, at one point it just decides to pop up. Yeah, the thing is that the exercise, the intake exercise is stress for the heart, uh, more dynamically, and, and then uh, can induce this problem if you have underlying condition. Mm -hmm. And at a certain moment, that's it. So it, it will start. Uh, depending the, the cause, you can have this fatal arrhythmia, for example, in the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or you can have uh, uh, occlusion of one of the vessels in, in case of a congenital problem in the coronary arteries. And it's because this exercise is not something that you are, you are stressing the heart, so you are showing the problem of the, of the heart at that time. Just to be clear, I don't know what uh, hypertrophic myopathy is, but I'll come to that. It's a certain that you said is uh, genetic, yeah? What are the other, what are the risk factors? In, in, in the population less than 35, the most common cause is uh, this neurotic condition. For people with more than 35, it's a, a coronary artery disease. You have atherosclerotic disease in your coronary arteries, and you can have one of these uh, events related with, with that, um, like myocardial infarction and arrhythmia related with this myocardial infarction that can happen. Okay, so what are the risk factors? I, this is different. For example, if, if the other population, we can detect this condition just with the ECG, with echo, with the analysis of the family history. In these people, you need to detect, you need to do control exercise like the tremble test, the stress echocardiogram that is combining tremble test with cardiac imaging. So you can detect this this problem in advance. You are running this test until maximum effort. So you can induce uh, electrical changes in the heart, symptoms, and also wall motion abnormalities in the echo. So you you will know that something is happening in the coronary arteries, and then you can continue investigating more with a CT scan, with coronary angiogram uh, to treat the, those lesions. Otherwise, you, you can have uh, severe coronary arteries and you're not doing exercise. And one, one day you decide that you want to restart your exercise and then uh, you, you can have one of these sudden death. What 
extreme exercise stuff like uh, ultras and uh, iron man i'm against the <laughs> those sports because uh, this uh, yeah it's it's uh, so much stressful for the heart uh, during prolonged times i mean 15 hours 20 hours doing this massive exercise is not good for the body, not only for the heart, it's, it's bad for the kidneys, it's bad for the liver. If you you can just uh, take a blood sample after one of these uh, races, <laughs> you can have all the markers elevated insane. So it's, it's, it's not a good thing for the body. So you need to certain depth. Is it possible? No, I mean, uh, usually it's, uh, people doing this endurance sports usually are more than 35 40 year old and they are training like six seven hours per day and they're doing very well and not having any problem because they are have, having healthy habits healthy life healthy diet no coronary artery disease so you you, you didn't uh, have this uh, in the first day so you are training for years like this but you can induce changes in the heart you can imagine a heart under stress every day for those periods of time, it will develop changes. Uh, dilated uh, cavities or even muscle circuit unexpected because you are uh, like doing workout with the heart. Uh, at this point, you need a very uh, uh, experiment the cardiologist to detect the difference that you are not uh, having uh, one of these hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and is something induced by the exercise. This uh, uh, at least heart or in the case of dilatation that is again some changes induced by the exercise and not having a dilated car dilated cardiomyopathy that is a difference so you need the experts uh, controlling this 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 uh, guy probably twice uh, per year uh, with echocardiogram treadmill test to detect problems but again related with this uh, intense exercise not necessarily with inherited condition or coronary artery disease. You have that? He doesn't like extreme exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Is it preventable sudden death? Can it be prevented or when it comes to status? That's it. It's a good question. Uh, for example, in USA, they are uh, doing checkups uh, for the young, this younger population doing sport, basketball, football, but uh, just with the exploration and um, family history. Mm -hmm. In, in Europe, for example, in, in our guidelines, we have uh, also included the ECG, but probably the more the better. You, you can um, have this also echocardiogram to also understand the cardiac anatomy, the function, and you don't have any any other problem. I remember cases with people training for uh, doing competitive trial alone, and then you detect the bicuspid artery valve, or for example, a mitral prolapse. That is a problem, a congenital problem in the mitral valve. At that time, with moderate to severe uh, insufficiency, um this is you can disqualify one one guy to do a competitive sport just for that mm -hmm. uh, when you detect that uh, this guy has to do amateur sport mm -hmm. um it's not in the time for for do a, a mitral replacement mitral surgery but then you need to stop this competitive sport doing we, yeah we have we have not only stress but we, this in this competitive way doing competition doing the um we have a, a guidelines to 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 follow this uh, if you detect one congenital disease if you detect one problem one valve when you need to stop that uh, chap to doing a competitive sport yeah it's so by doing all these uh, tests somebody can know how to prevent it you you can you can detect the congenital problem yeah. very early in the other case with more than 35 year old you can detect problem in the coronary arteries and at the same time you can again uh, check for possible cardiovascular risk factor meaning lipid panel uh, hypertension uh, this kind of condition that well not condition uh, factors that can uh, induce with the time uh, cardiovascular disease uh, problem in the coronary artery so you can detect early congenital problem or you can prevent early coronary artery disease in the other group but then, for instance, uh, if, uh, let's take an example. I'm going to put myself in a patient's shoes. So I don't know my family history. I don't have any symptoms, nothing of the sort. What would make me leave my house or take some time off from the office to come and do the say tests? Especially if you are doing a sport, for sure. If you are stressing your heart and you don't know you have or not an underlying condition, better to detect those problems before. So you suggest for anyone who's 
um, any tests? Anybody who's doing sports, they should do a test. Yeah, at least a uh, very basic uh, uh, follow up with the, the, the doctor just for exploration, family history, ECG. This is very basic and you can rule out a lot of problems in the heart just with that. Mm -hmm. very basic studies. From that, you, you can add uh, complementary uh, tests like the echocardiogram or treadmill test for sure. Uh, the more the better in some cases. That's for any age, yeah? For any age, yeah. Mostly you can, with different with different objectives, depending the the target population, but uh, yeah, you, you can do that. So uh, what about 35 year olds and above? The majority of the cases is because of coronary artery disease, because of atherosclerotic problems mm -hmm. uh, that you don't know uh, that they're there. Uh, and, and you will have, usually you have symptoms before. It's not some something like, okay, sudden death, this is there. No. The symptoms are there. Sometimes you have the, after one day doing exercise, you're feeling this chest pain, you are feeling shortness of breath, you have nausea, you have dizziness. This is the, the red flags that something is happening so better to consult uh, uh, to go to the doctor uh, and not continue doing exercise because you will have one problem usually they have some some uh, um, investigations some trials mm -hmm. showing that uh, most of the, those cases uh, about 35 year old they had symptoms before yeah. it was not a uh, something like you, you are having this uh, sudden day because sometimes you can't recover those guys mm -hmm. um, and then you can do your investigation and ask the patient and you can you can find all these answers okay so earlier i told you we're, we're beginning back to my cardiac infarctions okay so how can one recognize that they are having a myocardial infarction myocardial infarction usually is a heavy chest pain could be in the middle or in the left side you should have just said it's a heavy chest pain. Very heavy chest pain. It's uh, like uh, if you if you if you push with your fist to one person, is this kind of uh, pain? You're continuous. It's, it's a continuous. It's not a intermittent pain that you can point with your finger. No, no, no. It's a heavy chest pain and um, irradiating sometimes uh, to the neck, sometimes to the left arm, um, but not necessary. This is the majority of the cases you can recognize something is wrong and better to go to one place to do a, again an ECG to detect this very early uh, to rule out because we have a specific treatment for that. When you have uh, you are having a myocardial infarction, you have one of your coronary arteries blocked. Mm -hmm. So all the muscle, uh, depending on this uh, artery, start dying because not receiving blood, not receiving oxygen. So that's the reason for the pain. You have muscle that is dying. And if you, if you don't open this artery very early, you will have a massive muscle that it will not mm -hmm. uh, contributing anymore to the contraction. You will have a problem with heart failure and sometimes even uh, arrhythmia because of that. Mm -hmm. So you need to identify very early the symptoms, go to a hospital to do this ECG because they can save your muscle, they can save your myocardium, they can save save from this uh, event that will have uh, uh, sequels. So you're saying uh, if somebody were to experience that very heavy chest pain, as you call it, they should go see a doctor. Yeah. If, if you are in doubt, always go to the emergency department, call the ambulance, just to obtain that picture of the heart at that time. You will have this ECG done and you will know if this is a myocardial infarction or not. Sometimes you don't have complete obstruction. You can have also some minor signs in the ECG or if it's very typical pain, but then again interrupted. So you, you had the, the pain just maybe for five minutes or 10 minutes. So it could be angina. So you have a partial blockage on one of the artery and you have some uh, muscle that is giving this uh, uh, alarm that something is happening from time to time. So better check and, and detect the problem. So what can happen if somebody doesn't see the doctor or they don't run tests to find out what's wrong? Unfortunately, sometimes we have patients waiting at home for three, four days. Uh, so when when they come to the hospital, uh, you have uh, all the muscle, depending on that artery, 
gone, gone destroyed, and that's it's impossible to recover. It's death, it's death tissue, and depending the artery, you will have uh, more or less uh, damage in the heart. Uh, but you will have sequel for sure. So we have a uh, imagine like an engine in the car. So you will have a reduction in your in your horsepower. Sometimes it's a half, mm -hmm. sometimes it's even more. So you will you will not uh, not able to do normal activity. You will have a lot of medication. You will have uh, just to help that heart that now has impaired function. It's not working properly. And you will not recover from that. Percentage, you know, a little percentage of patients, you can have also arrhythmias related to that uh, scar tissue, mm. to, to that dead, uh, dead myocardium. And this arrhythmia usually are fatal arrhythmia. So you can have a sudden death because of that. Something known as, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, silent myocardial infarction. Yeah, we, we, we can see that. Sometimes, uh, in specific, specifically in the diabetic patient, mm -hmm. uh, they cannot feel the pain. So they, they, they can have uh, uh, problems in the heart, angina or myocardial infarction, and express different symptoms. Express uh, like shortness of breath, or just I'm sweating a lot or having bl low blood pressure. So this, this is not something like the typical chest pain. Uh, and they can they can miss the opportunity to 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 go to the emergency department. Sometimes the pain in in the in, in the food, and they can have these uh, uh, ulcers, and they can have this problem yeah. because they, uh, with the shoes or with the could be the same in the heart because the the glucose is affecting the nerves, and they're not feeling the pain because of that. Wow. So what uh, what should they look out for? Yes, so that they, they can come and see a doctor. That diabetic patient with a long history of the diabetic disease is not something like I'm a new diabetic. I'm starting using insulin or something like that. Um, and again, you need to in those patients you need to control very well all the cardiovascular risk factor: diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol. Just to get less tickets for this bad lottery. In other cases, you have some atypical symptoms, epigastric pain, mm -hmm. so maybe just a bad digestion, maybe just uh, the stomach, and it's the right coronary artery mm -hmm. that is providing the blood to the inferior part of the... So they, they can just sometimes not uh, interpret very well the pain. So uh, lastly, how can, uh, how can one prevent myocardial infarction? Again, it's a matter to control your cardiovascular risk factor to have less of these plaques. Mm -hmm. Usually the problem is one of these lipid plaques uh, will break mm -hmm. and it will expose all this uh, lipid content to the blood and all your platelets will try to repair that thing and will create the thrombus and will block the, the complete circulation. So that's it? Yeah, con prevention, prevention, prevention. Before I sign up, before we sign up, what would you like to tell the people about setting death? We, we can uh, detect uh, inherited problems easily in, in the clinic, especially if you have family, family history. But if not, again, we can detect those problems. And if you are about 35 years old and doing exercise, doing a sport, or you are having sedentary life, and then one day you, you want to restart doing your exercise, just better go to the cardiologist, run some tests, to, to see that everything is fine and you can do easily your, your exercise. All right, Doctor. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. For us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the doctor. Doctor Jose Carlos Moreno Salas. I have nothing to add on to that other than I'm booking the consultation with him in case I need to, to get checked before setting the class. Until next time.